Hello my beautiful MK Love fam and welcome back to another episode of Weekly Angel Guidance. If you're new here, my name is Melanie Kate Love and I make videos every single Sunday or Monday depending on where you are in this beautiful world. Now this is a very exciting week because we are beginning our next round of Eclipse for 2019. Eclipse basically end things and start things brand new. It's kind of like a full, a new moon on steroids. It's a really big deal and last eclipse I got married. I was traveling the world and I'm so excited to see what is in store for you in this next lot of eclipses. So this is going to be from July the 1st to the 7th and this week we're actually going through three phases of the moon. Now on Monday we're going to be starting out in the balsamic moon. Now your affirmation for this is I am so happy and grateful for this wonderful opportunity to disconnect from the world and just be. I reflect with gratitude and take time to rest. As you will notice, this is the part of the moon where the moon is becoming, um, it's waning, so it's becoming less illuminated. And you'll notice you probably, as we go, we go on to the new moon, you won't be able to see it. So if you can't see the moon in the sky, think of this as a time of introspection and pulling back and focusing on just on you. Then from Tuesday to Friday, we move into the new moon in 10 degrees of Cancer. Now Cancer is basically about nurturing family, home, um, yeah, it's a lot to do with home and family. This is a really powerful time because this actually marks at the beginning of eclipse season when we have a total solar eclipse in Cancer. It's a huge deal, which I'm very, very excited. So your affirmation for this part of the moon cycle is, I am so happy and grateful now that I celebrate this wonderful new opportunity to manifest the next chapter towards my dream life. I set an intention with love and solidify my why as to why it's so important to me. So it's like, okay, what is your intention for not just the next moon cycle, but not the next month? What is your intention for the rest of the year? What is the next chapter, this big chapter that you are manifesting towards your dream life? Think of it. Think of it, it's New Year's 2019. What are you celebrating? What have you achieved? How can you get there? I always think big picture and then I break it down from that way. Okay, think of it as like reverse engineering what you need to do. You'd be like, okay, I wanna achieve this and these are the steps that I need to take over the next six months in order to make this a reality. This is a really powerful time where some of you may be moving, some of you may be getting married, some of you may be starting a whole brand new careers. There's a lot going on because there's so many retrogrades, which I'll talk about in a second. We'll get more to that in a sec. Oh, also check on the screen right now and I'll tell you the time in which this is going to occur for you. So this eclipse, it's really powerful if you can meditate at this time. Okay, so this is on Tuesday, July the 2nd. So this is 12, 16 p.m. Pacific time, 3, 16 p.m. Eastern time, 8, 16 p.m. British Standard time. Then on Wednesday, the 3rd of July, this is 12, 46 Indian Standard time, 5, 16 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard time, and 7, 16 a.m. New Zealand Standard time. So there is a lot going on. I'm just like, oh, I have been waiting for this for such a long time. You know, last eclipse I got married, but then two eclipses before that I got engaged. And oh, it's just, it's just a really, really exciting time. I'm feeling a bit of like <clears throat> throat chakra blockage coming up as I'm talking about this. So there could be a lot to do with communication, a lot of standing your ground, well, there's a lot to do with standing your ground. You're going through a massive transformation, a massive rebirth. You're literally laying the foundations as to what you want, as to what you want your life to be for the next 20 or 30 years. <clears throat> All right. So then from Saturday to Sunday, we have the waxing crescent. This is a wonderful time to plan. So it's like, yeah, you set your big goal. It scares the bejeebus out of you. But now you need to plan out exactly the action steps that you need to take. 
don't plan out every day. I would say plan out five days out of the seven because things change. And I don't want you to get disheartened if you're planning for like seven full days, you know, be mindful about this one because that's something that I tend to do. So your affirmation is, I am so happy and grateful now that I have the opportunity to plan for success. I segment my intention into actionable steps and schedule into my calendar. Well, my affirmation is just bomb, bang on, and it tells you exactly what you need to do. Now, because we're moving into this new eclipse season, I've made something different for you. So have a look on the screen right now. We have the astrological influences. Now, so far, I just have the retrogrades. There's a lot more. We also have the North Node in Cancer, which <laughs> it's interesting. We have the North Node in Cancer, and then we have this, um, what is it, total solar eclipse in Cancer. So this is like a, such a very, like such a nurturing time that you're going through. So we have four retrogrades. Yes, we. Have, I've been talking about them. Um, a lot, but I kind of feel that you need to be able to see it. Maybe screenshot, so maybe I can do a picture like this. <laughs> okay, so we have the Jupiter retrograde. So this actually occurred in April and it will be with us until August the 11th. So this is about philosophical and spiritual introspection and reflection involving growth, happiness, and success with your romantic and intimate relationships. Intimate as being like the people closest to you, most likely your fam. All right, Pluto retrograde. This happened, it started in April the 24th and it will be with us until October the 3rd. Now, Pluto retrograde is about massive transformation that can bring up a lot of fears and anxieties, which we've been working through. And it's requiring patience and determination as you navigate your own personal power. And this is like you not being a pushover anymore. This is like you having the boundaries and you having the courage to speak your truth. We also have Saturn retrograde, which happened in April the 30th, and it's with us until September the 18th. Now it's a Lord of Karma. Your lessons relate to your thoughts and your words. Now this is a difficult time for making important decisions due to negative thoughts and indecision. You'll be able to make a very, very clear decision come January, and I'll tell you more about that in the, in the next coming weeks. Okay, so Neptune retrograde actually began last week on June the 21st and is with us until November the 27th. So this is about delusions and deceptions which are revealed to us, which can actually bring up a lot of disappointments. So be aware of that as your emotions may surface. Now channel your inspiration and enthusiasm into hard work to manifest your dreams. So. That's pretty long winded, but that's basically the moon phases of the week, the astrological influences. And now let's get into the tarot to see what the weekly angel guidance is. I kind of feel like it's really important to tell you about the astrological influences, especially as we're going through, you know, we've got the North Node in Cancer, I think until March, 2020. Um, which is about taking care and nurturing yourself as you're transforming. But then there's so many other things that are going on behind the scenes. So we're kind of like that. I don't know. I kind of like the infusion between astrology, angel guidance and tarot. And anyways, let's get on with the focus for this week. All right, angels. Big week. Can my beautiful MK Love fam have one card for their focus. Oh, mate, it flew off the table. Oh, okay, interesting. We have the moon card, the moon card for the focus of the week. Now, that's quite interesting. Let me just check if this is recording. Yes, it is. Okay, the moon is basically a time of like introspection. Um, it's about healing the shadow aspects of ourselves, healing the things that don't sit well with us. So if you're in a situation that feels uncomfortable and you're like, Rah! and you know, you have, you're triggered by it, then this is an opportunity for you to heal. Interesting that this is happening. This is the focus so far, healing, but also being gentle with yourself because we have the North Node in Cancer. All right, Monday, balsamic moon, rest and reflection. What do we need to know? I think it's that one. Oh, okay. The Knight of Wands. Interesting that this is actually coming up in this phase of the moon because the Knight of Wands is like moving. It's like a lot of movement and it's going in the direction of where you need to be. How does that fit with the balsamic moon? 
I am so happy and grateful for this wonderful opportunity to disconnect from the world and just be. Let's get clarity on that because I don't know how that fits with this phase of the moon. Like I understand the card, but in terms of this phase of the moon, we have clarity on the Knight of Wands for Monday in the Balsamic Moon. Righto. Okay. The, okay. I saw the Justice card, which we've had like the last two or three weeks. Justice is restoring the imbalance. How do you restore the imbalance? You work smarter, not harder. You rest, disconnect from social media, recalibrate your soul, go out in nature, camp, whatever that looks like. There's a lot of other cards, there's actually four. We've got the star, the star is knowing that you have a dream and that you can make it reality, but it's also knowing that there is something that is guiding you and you know that you're going to get it. And it's not about the quick fixes. I feel like this is more like you're planning for long-term stability and success. You're not looking for like buying likes on Instagram, you know, you're looking to build a community so to speak. You got the eight of wands, which always reminds me of the law of attraction, speaking, speaking words of wisdom, <laughs> Let it be. Um, speaking what you want into existence. So being very mindful of your self talk. Then we also have, Ooh, the 10 of cups, which is an amazing card for being like the balance of the masculine and feminine, the spiritual and the material. It's very blissful in terms of like your emotions. You have come a long way and there is lots that you have reflected upon. And then we have the devil card, which is the fear which has kind of come up a lot, especially as we're going through this Pluto retrograde transition. And the fear is basically like, I love this card because of the imagery and because it links in with my free exclusive training when I actually made, um, if you haven't already checked it, make sure you do. It's where I teach you how to heal your emotional pain from your childhood trauma. But there's a, there's a girl underneath, uh, underneath like this rock formation and, oh, and then I hear that change the rhythm from Katy Perry. Change the rhythm. Are we told Slipping in utopia. I don't know the words. We're constantly living in a bubble bubble. Okay. It's basically she's chained, but she has the key above her head. She doesn't realize that she can set herself free. How do you set yourself free if we go back to everything that's going on? Yes, this is about, I don't, I don't feel like the Knight of Wands was meant to come, but now I can't second guess myself. So this is like, there has, I feel like there has been like a lot of movement and it's a lot of being like, bam, 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 bam. And you're reflecting on, maybe you're reflecting on like the hustle. I don't really like that word because it's never really used, right? Maybe you're, maybe it has been a lot of go, 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 or this is to, well, it's definitely to come. I'm kind of a bit thrown by that card. All the others totally make sense. The justice, restoring the imbalance, knowing the star, knowing that you have a dream, the eight of wands, speaking what you want to exist in, the 10 of cups, you have done a lot of work and the devil card is like basically the fear card. Okay, so there's been a lot that, that you're kind of reflecting on. Make sure you journal, journal out all of your emotions during this time. All right, let's get into the new moons. This is for Tuesday. Well, depending on where you are in the world, I'm reading from British Standard Time. But just take from this, whatever. Ah, okay, Three of Pentacles. I think this was the focus card from last week. Actually, the Three of Pentacles is about your support system and, ha and surrounding yourself with the right people, but also knowing that you, you've got the chameleon there and the chameleon is on the person. So it's like, maybe you have this one person that's very adaptable and can do, this probably could be a partner or a best friend. This could be someone who can adapt to where you're at in terms of like, you're the business person and then when you're like the person that's not on camera and you're in your pajamas, you know, someone that can lift you up, someone that's there to support you no matter what, no matter the thick or the thin, there's someone really that, that's rooting for you. And you, you're really gonna figure out who your real friends are, especially when you go through a difficult time. Honestly, there is gonna be very few people that are going to be there when you need it. Yeah, everyone else is going through for, through their own thing, but pay attention to the people that are always there when things go wrong. All right, Wednesday. What do we need to know for Wednesday? Oh, oh, 
Oh my gosh, we had this last week too, or the week before, the Wheel of Fortune. So this is like halfway through the dreamer's journey. You're getting to such, well, this is abundance. This is a massive, this is a major arcana, which means this is a massive life event. So you know how we've been saying for like the last two weeks in Weekly Angel Guidance, like the golden buzzer is coming. Maybe you're able to see this manifest in terms of the physical realm. This is kind of a big deal. Oh my gosh. And then I think of like the Wheel of the World from Carrie Underwood. That's a beautiful song. But in terms of karma, if we go back to who is the Lord of Karma? Saturn. In terms of karma, if you have been doing the wrong thing, then this Wheel of Fortune may go the other way. The wheel can turn either way, depending on the karma in which you have been infusing. If you have been in alignment, you've been following your true authentic self, listening to your intuition, doing the right things, then this is going to be amazing. If you haven't, you've been caught in some like toxic relationship where you were going to be married to this person and then all of a sudden it fizzled out, that is a blessing. And I know that some of you, when you go through those times and those massive challenges, it's really, it's hard to swallow. But Thank God you worked it out now instead of 20 or 30 years later when you were like a miserable, shriveled up old woman. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, oh my goodness, this came out, this is, oh, okay. This card came out two weeks ago as well, the Eight of Cups or Three of Cups. Eight of Cups is like making a decision and going with it. So maybe this Wheel of Fortune is an opportunity that is presented to you and now you can actually make an informed decision and start to, well, we are planning. No, we're figuring out what we want. So maybe in terms of the Wheel of Fortune, it's like, what do you actually want to manifest in terms of your dream life? Like literally, where do you want to be at the end of 2020, 2019? You know, and now you're like, this is exactly what I want to do. And you've like made a decision and you're like, I'm going to do this and it's going to scare the bejeebus out of you, but you know that you need to do it. You know, don't get caught in this comfort zone because if you're in the comfort zone, you're not going to grow. Everything you have ever wanted is literally outside of your comfort zone. Anything that scares you, good, do it. <laughs> All right, Friday. Wow, these cards are just like flipping over in here. There's quite a number of them actually. Okay, so the first one that I saw is the Knight of Pentacles. Wow, okay, pentacles is abundance and the knight is like moving, he is not stopping, he is an unstoppable force. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Then these other two cards came up recently in the last couple of weeks too. The six of cups and the six of pentacles. So the six of cups is about that childlike innocence and, and working smarter and not harder. It's also about doing things that make you feel good and finding the alignment instead of the hustle. What does that look like? Maybe that means just going for a walk in the morning and not having any like set, like, okay, let's talk about me for a second. I find it very difficult to get out of the house. You know, I just get into work mode and I'm just like in my own bubble and I'm like, I haven't left the house all day and then it's been like three days. So I do the hardest thing first. So I do that and then I'm like, okay, then I can just play, not really play, but that helps me to play better and to achieve more with less and I set massive goals and I can achieve them. The Six of Pentacles is about the cycles and how everything is interconnected. So you've got this lovely tree down the bottom that is like growing through basically this dirt and it's come out and it's got these beautiful, young, lovely um, leaves and it's being watered and being taken care of this water and this abundance that is spilling out from this piper who's up the top and is completely oblivious. So how does that fit in with this? Let me just go back to Friday. Okay, so the new moon. I set my intention with love and solidify my why and solidify why this is so important to me. I've got a typo in here. Why this is so important to me. Okay, so you know what you want. You're gonna get it by doing more play and you know if you play, then everything is going to be interconnected. If you're at a higher vibrational state in terms of like the emotional guidance scale, the higher you are on the emotional guidance scale, the easier it is to manifest. Exercise and food and mother nature are three key ingredients to help you manifest like 
that. But in terms of manifesting, you have to heal the darkness first. You have to surrender to it. You know, if the, the angels are telling you in terms of the Wheel of Fortune that you're on the wrong track, get off it and say, shit, I didn't mean for that to happen. Show me the way. And, and I want you to say, I am so happy and grateful where I am. I surrendered to the process and I set myself free. Everything is working out for you. Like the universe does, doesn't like make your life hell on purpose. They match you where you are vibrationally. So if you want your life to be amazing, level up, go outside, lay on the grass, go to the beach, have a bath, paint your nails, do whatever makes you feel good. However that looks like for you, however you need to play to feel good, do it. Get some toys, play in the bath, be a child, have a bubble bath, I don't know. Whatever floats your boat, do it. Just do it, just do it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, so Saturday we move into the crescent moon. I segment my intention into actionable steps and schedule into my calendar. Wow, okay. There's a lot of cards that are coming out recently. Whoa, there's actually four, let me pull the first one. Oh, the world card, holy flippin' heck. We've had this this is now the third time in the past month. The world, if you're new to the fam, you probably have no idea why I get excited about this card. But this card is the last card in the, oh, is that 20? Oh, 23 minutes, I gotta hurry up. So the world card is card number 78 in the tarot deck. It's the last card. This is getting to the end. We've kind of been feeling the end is coming, but it's interesting that this is now coming in this eclipse phase. I don't need to pull any other cards for that one because that's basically, no. Nah. You've gotten to an end, you're about to start something new. Interesting with starting something new is we're planning something out. And Sunday, last card, what do we need to know for Sunday? There it is. Oh my God, the King of Cups. Pretty sure we had this last two weeks ago. Two weeks ago we had this card because we had the Queen of Cups and then we had the King of Cups. Holy smokes, okay, amazing. King of Cups is like, um, getting to a level in terms of your emotion that you have healed something. It's interesting because we've got the moon card. You have been able to heal something. You have been able to make peace with it. You have been able to release something. You have been doing, excuse me, you have been doing a lot of work. You have been making peace with fear and you have been saying, you know, okay, like this is scaring the absolute bejeebus out of me, but I know that everything is working out for me. I'm going on this massive transformational journey and the angels are trying to say, you know, yeah, you're on the right track or hell no girl, get off. What the flip are you doing either in that relationship? What the hell are you doing in that job? Commuting to a place that you absolutely friggin' hate and you get sick all the time and you grinding your teeth at night because that's what, that used to be my life when I was a primary school teacher commuting in the dark, getting home in the dark. The only time I'd see sun was when I was on playground duty with my kids. Okay, there is a lot going on. I'm still, I'm still like not really sure about the Knight of Wands, how that fits. That kind of like threw me. So if any of you can give me clarity on how you think that one fits, because that card kind of threw me for Monday. I understand the rest of the cards. I understand the Knight of Wands by itself, but how it fits in this phase of the moon, not really sure. Maybe I will know in time. Can only get better now. The fact that we've got the Wheel of Fortune, Major Arcana, the world, Major Arcana, basically the end. This is the end. We're about to start something new. And then the King of Cups and the moon. Like, there's so much supercharged energy. Oh, also, I forgot to tell you something. Oh, it is. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot to put it in my notes. Yeah, so on the seventh, Mercury retrograde begins. So there's another retrograde to add to the list. So what is that? We're up to like five now? Five planets in retrograde. Mercury retrograde happens like three to four times a year. It's a planet that rules communication, travel, and electronics. This is a time where you really need to be mindful of what you say to people, especially as we're dealing with this moon card, healing the darkness. You know, she's got, she's taken the mask off. Think of like the mask with Jim Carrey, you know, or the book from Lewis Howells, The Mask of Masculinity. Taking the mask off of who you feel like you need to be 
and put it on the wall and say, thanks for showing me that I don't want to be this person. But then on the other side, you've got this beautiful love heart and it's strapped to the hand. Don't forget who you are. You are enough. You are worthy. You are wonderful. You are lovable because you exist. You are enough. And I'm so happy and grateful that you're going to be able to get to the stage where you truly believe that and you feel it and you start to make all your decisions from a place of love. What's the next card that comes up after the moon? The sun, the sun is going to come out. This is a time of darkness and introspection as you're starting to heal. Yeah, the moon is waning. Well, the moon has waned and it's starting to wax a little bit. This could be a time where some of you could be on day one of your menstrual cycle if it's synced up with the moon. Think of it if like if you can't see the moon at night time or it's not too illuminated, then that's when you start to pull in. When it's super duper bright, Boom, that's really a good time to go camping because you don't need to have your own light. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, amazing week ahead. Thank you so much for joining me for this fabulous episode. This is episode one as a part of this eclipse season. I'm very, very excited. Thank you to all you beautiful souls that are joining me on the live chat right now. Oh my goodness. And for everyone else that is catching the replay, I will be reading all of your comments and giving them a little heart, which will probably be in a week from now because I kind of do that whenever, just like half an hour before I do the live chat, I catch up on the comments from the week ahead. So just because I haven't responded to you straight away doesn't mean that I won't be able to give you a little heart to say thank you and I appreciate you. Wow. For any of you struggling to heal as you're going through this time, I highly recommend that you check out my free exclusive training. This is where I literally teach you how to heal your childhood traumas. I specialize in childhood trauma because most of the either the illnesses and the diseases or the toxic relationships or whatever you're going through now as an adult, if you look back to your childhood and you figure out, you know, the way your parents maybe spoke about money, the way that you were treated, maybe you were hit as a child, maybe you were sexually abused, maybe your father left, whatever it may be, as you go back and you focus on healing that little child, that inner child, and you say, I love you, I love you, I love you, and I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. When you send love to that, ch that child, you will notice you'll be able to start, well, I teach my coaching clients how to reprogram their subconscious. When you reprogram the subconscious, which basically deals with 95% of your thoughts. Do you believe 95% of your 95% of your thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis are unconscious? So if you have blockages within your body, it's going to delay the manifestation process. You're probably stuck in this stage, repeating this year after year after year. And if you wanna break that cycle, you need to reprogram the thoughts, you need to rebalance the energy centers, and then reconnect the body, the mind, and soul into vibrational alignment. It's a lot of work. It's actually an eight week intensive course. I won't be taking new people over Mercury retrograde. It's not a good time to attract clients. I've done that before and I have attracted the wrong types of people and there's communication issues. So you have until the 6th. So you have until Saturday if you would like to check out um, that free exclusive training. Because basically what I do is I give you that training, which is a 20 minute video that I created for you. Then if you feel that you would like to progress to the next stage, you can fill out an application form for a free 45 minute chat with me. We basically can talk about where you are, where you're struggling, where you wanna be, and then I can tell you how exactly you can get there. And then if we're a vibrational match, I will invite you in to my coaching program. Please keep in mind that I work with four clients four clients, so I give them the attention to exactly what they need. It's a pretty intensive process. And if you want to find out more, just link in the description or melaniekatelove.com. Anyways, my love, thanks for watching. Have an amazing week. Please keep me updated and follow me over on Instagram at melaniekatelove to keep up to date with what's going on and I kind of share my thoughts as to what I'm going through. Anyways, have an amazing day and I will see you next week. I love you, I love you, I love you. Goodbye.